final mic to you on whether U.S. stocks will continue to brush off these global growth concerns today emanating from Europe. Yeah, the quiet really remains the story. And I think it's no it's no accident that the market firmed up as, as Europe closed, as you guys have been alluding to. Also, bond yields in the U.S. ticked slightly up uh, from that moment, too. Uh, well, can it continue like that? I think as long as the U.S. data hold up, it probably can uh, for a while right now. I do think the fact that uh, the market has been willing to kind of look through this period where there aren't that many identifiable catalysts. Uh, the market's been willing to say we're probably going to get more help from the Fed if we need it and maybe we will get lucky and we don't. That seems okay for now. But I am conscious of the fact that we're using up a lot of energy to stand still in terms of the broad index. So you have to see uh, if that breaks one way or the other before we get an excuse to, to you know, to have some, some better news. That is, that is such a Mike Santoliism. It's true. We're using up a lot of energy to stand still. We're doing it. What does that mean? Uh, it means that you know you're, you're, you're soaking up a lot of uh, a lot of the demand for stocks and not really making progress in the overall indexes. You can you can look at it two ways. You can basically say, fine, that's just kind of we're resting, we're gathering up uh, a little bit of, uh, of of energy to move higher, but it does take energy just to stay also supported. It's very applicable to when I go on the treadmill. I feel like uh, <laughs> very tiring. It's for me right now. Unbelievably yeah. disappointing takes a lot of energy results, to stay still. Always. So it's, right. it's, it's apt. Uh, Alicia, I was going to say. Back to the Eurozone data, where do you stand on whether that, that's a factor for U.S. equities? So if I could just add another metaphor here, I would say we're, this market is like boiling the frog slowly. So this morning we had another hit to fundamentals, and yet the market is 1% off the highs. No one is surprised with bad European data anymore. Okay? This is what we're expecting. We're expecting to see Germany in a recession. And we're probably expecting some fiscal impetus coming out of the European countries. And I would say that's actually baked into the market. Interestingly, France is up 21 percent this year. Even the, the, the European markets are up, just like the S&P, about 20 percent this year, which is telling you that pretty much the bad news is baked in. Here in the U.S., the city economic surprise index is ticking upwards, and that's why you see the consumer companies doing pretty well. And housing sticking up as well. Mark, Mike, sorry, last week uh, you, you looked at the market breadth, and that, that's an encouraging bullish signal? Yeah, hit an all-time high, uh, the, the kind of advanced decline line. It did uh, last week, about Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, today, breadth was positive again, so it sort of flattened out, but at a record level. Typically, that does mean that the overall index remains you know, reasonably well supported. Uh, very often, like last September in 2018, breadth gave way before the overall market did. So that's one of the things I think the bulls are, are really pinning their hopes on. In terms of sector performance, Mark, uh, consumer staples and consumer discretionary did have a good day. Is this, is this still going to be largely defined by what bond yields do based on where we see the sector strength and weakness? I, I, I think that's definitely relevant for consumer staples. Consumer discretionary, on the other hand, it's really just because the entire world, not just the United States, the entire world is relying on the U.S. consumer to keep this thing going, you know, the entire world. And you mentioned some of these consumer names hitting all-time highs. Walmart, Dollar Tree. So we own Walmart. We own Dollar General, TJ Maxx. So buying preferences have changed. The consumer is now more price conscious. That's why the Walmarts, Dollar Trees, Dollar Generals, and TJ Maxx's are all working. Uh, Alicia, in terms of what we've seen in, in the move in yields, they did pick up, now coming back down again. Does that mean that you can't buy the banks? I think you do buy the banks because I think ultimately you're, you're, you're secreting the yield curve eventually. The, the Fed is clearly clearly trying to disinvert the yield curve, and I think the Fed has the markets back. We expect another 25 basis point cut this year, and if that happens, you're probably going to increase the long end eventually. What, what if that doesn't happen for the broader market? Does the market get spooked, or is, is trade a bigger factor in terms of uh, the, the binary macro influences on equities? We strongly think that the Fed is actually going to come into, come into play here. If the Fed doesn't, it could spook the market because ultimately it's been monetary policy, global monetary policy, that has supported all these markets when the fundamental data has been pretty, pretty lousy. But on the other hand, the lower rates have increased what's going on in the housing markets. You see more confidence in the consumer. So it's definitely working here in the U.S. And we are, in fact, supporting the rest of the world in terms of growth. So, I mean, we hear that a lot. The Fed has the markets back. Don't fight the Fed. The Fed is in play. 
does that mean with 20% gain so far this year in the S&P 500, the downside is limited still? It seems like that equation works for now. It does. I mean, also, you're seeing people de-emphasize the earnings growth story. I don't think expectations are particularly high for earnings growth going into next year. Right now, the published estimates for the third quarter are for a decline of 3% again. That's basically the way it looked the last two quarters. Then you came in slightly positive. So all of a sudden, you've gone through this nine-month period where you've nursed your way through uh, an earnings plateau or so soft Fed patch. Trump's earnings and then the well at, or the earnings flat is okay as long as the Fed's doing what it's doing and you have bond yields more than a percent below where they were a year ago but then trade is a wild card right and the Fed story is very bound up with trade I mean some would argue that you probably need a bad surprise on trade to make sure the Fed cuts again which is not the best equation but of course that's debatable